So I'll start by speaking of the a bit of background information, why we're having this panel at Wikimedia 2015. One of the main reasons is that there has been a substantial increase of the number of requests made by governments and public and private companies to remove information from the internet. The Coseja case is a recent um, case that shows um, what in Europe is wrongly called the right to, to being forgotten, which means removing certain search results from Google. And this is something that has had a, an impact on on the media and also on Wikipedia, of course, because there's a website where we have a record of those websites that have been removed from uh, search engines as a result of a legal decree. So first, we're going to speak with Alejandro Andulce, who will be very open in their conversation and how we perceive uh, that the, these requests are eroding the practice of journalism. Thank you. Good afternoon. Thank you, Wikimania, for the invitation. Thank you, Pepe Flores, for moderating. I'm Dulce Ramos, general editor of, general, of Animal Politico, and well. We're speaking in very direct terms. And at Animal Politico, we've received requests to eliminate content from our website. Uh, we haven't made this public. I'll explain why in a moment. But with regards to the ex-governor of the state of Coahuila, this is where I'm from, Humberto Moreira. Humberto Moreira wanted it was asking us to remove the content from a blog that we didn't ha don't have anymore. We used to have it. It was called Cuna de Grillos by Beto Tavira. He is a journalist that has combined with uh, great success in terms of his rigor as a journalist. The pink, I, I guess, the, the sentimental part of journalism together with serious hard politics. So Beto Tavira had written about the death, the murder of the son of Humberto Moreira, and it was a, we said nothing that that wasn't public. It was a profile of the Moreira family, had a few images of the wake and of, of the son of Governor Moreira, where you could see the, the, the governor crying, of course, it's a terrible situation. And maybe a few months ago, we three months ago, we received a petition, not from Moreira, surprise for those of you who know about Right to Forget, from a Spanish company called Eliminalia, in which this company was requesting that we remove this content as a result of the right to forget. We had an internal discussion between the partners of Animal Politico and the editorial committee, the three people who decide this, and we said, don't even answer the email. If someone is asking us to censor something that is not harming Humberto Moreira and that does, is not saying any lies, why should we remove it? If they want them to remove it, we'll have, they'll have to take it to the courts. And then the next days, other other newspapers said of something similar, the Vanguardia Journal El Norte as well, which is part of Grupo Reforma, had a similar case. And what's crazy about the case is that there was media that, wa that were asking Moreira to remove um, pictures of his abs. So these were pictures that he had been sending the people he knew. He was trying to, to get this content removed. And this was actually uploaded by, by him with his consent. And that has been the position of Animal Politico and how we are going to face the right to being forgotten. So if people request this, we'll say, you know what, we if, if there's no reason to hide this or to remove it, because that's those are the ones who that because it's the people in power that 
journalism focuses on so that it's normal to speak of them and if it has to, if we have to take it to the court we'll take it to the court so i was able to speak of this in great depth with the rapporteur of the OAS on uh, freedom of expression, of expression, Edison Lanza, he said something, and I repeat this, and I like this phrase. It says, the right to being forgotten is not as important as the right to memory. So now I pass it forward to Alejandro Baez. We received the same message as you received when, with Moreira, and I think that it led to a series of similar petitions. So there's something I'd like to say before before discussing this. We've we have removed lots of content from Sin Embargo. Let me tell you why, because in the last few years. A great number of Mexicans were taken to prison unjustly as a result of the war on drugs of Felipe Calderón and Peña Nieto as a way of showing so-called results of this war, this political war. And they used Notimex, the state agency, to promote information of arrests before these people were taken to the judge. So these people hadn't been put on trial, but they had already been mentioned by the state news agency. And we were publishing, publishing, publishing these notes, and these were often, well, the, the people are just publishing because they, they have, they're, they're subscribed to Notimex, and we receive emails from people who were never, um, who, who were never ex accused. And these emails, well, we're eliminating the information from these people because there's no need to remember people who were accused of something they were never taken to trial for or never found guilty for. Uh, and well, of course, then we have the case of Moreira, of Governor Moreira, and another case that was uh, that affected us. In the case of Moreira, we did the same as Animal Politico, which was to not answer and fuck Moreira, fuck him, and fuck everything he represents, which is basically what he represents is corruption and the and and the theft of a country and just to add to what my colleague just said as always a court in the US has found that we were right local media of Coahuila was right this guy this son of a bitch has millions of dollars in accounts in the United States, and now he wants to uh, uh, to remove a photo where you can see his abs. That's stupid. That's ridiculous. He can he can rob a country dry, but please don't show pictures of his half naked body. So this is a case where, well, Moreira was promoting this. And there was another case, and I'd like to, to, to get your attention for a moment. Halfway, uh, mid-November last year, people started sending messages through, to, through social media to reporters of Sin Embargo saying that we had suspended payments and were in bankruptcy. Reporters were saying on, on Twitter, so-called reporters were saying that we had fired them and never paid them. In October, these so-called reporters became hundreds of reporters that had been fired by us, and they said we were going to close because we were in bankruptcy and we were selling content to the highest bidder, and they were calling us prostitutes. And at the end of 2014, on the Facebook page of Belinda, a pop singer with 8 million followers, there was an image of me saying I was a child rapist, and then an image of Belinda, the pop star, 
where it said that I, I, I gave money to a judge and then got fired. So imagine 8 million teenagers furious saying started attacking me. So imagine what kind of crisis this was for us. So I was joking with my reporters and saying, let's be, let's really get concerned when Radiohead gets hacked because Belinda, well, maybe she's she isn't as important. So in this, in these days, Sin embargo was accused of many other things. And afterwards, we contacted the person, the, the manager of Belinda called Dana Vasquez, and who has, among other clients, one of the daughters of the present and other clients, and she's the manager of Belinda's account. Three days later, she answered and she said that she had an entire team researching how this account had been hacked. As you know, Facebook um, can recover an account in a matter of hours, so she needs to respond now to to the courts. We're going to take this to the last consequences. Dana Vasquez afterwards participated, this manager of artists, in, a, in an illegal campaign, which you might remember, Mexicans, uh, in a campaign when hashtags and tweets were used to benefit the Green Party. Uh, a party that's a very unfortunate party. And then in November, we had a DOS denial uh, attack the same day when we presented the report together with Proceso and Aristegui about the White House of the Mexican president's wife. Then there were def defamation campaigns against us and against Sin Embargo in the next months as well. And I tell this because this was all the result of a campaign of a notice. A so-called, well, we received a so-called letter from Google asking us to remove two pictures. Both pictures belong to Adrian Robalcaba, the gov well, the mayor of Guajimalpa. He was um, violent in these pictures. He had a gun in the picture. And we said, as Animal Politicos, no, we're not going to do it. We're not going to remove this a single picture of this guy, because as a politician, he needs to respond to, for his actions. And of course, people need to know who he is, who he was. So after we received emails, we started receiving phone calls, and finally a person who came to our offices, and then we knew we were in trouble because Sin Embargo's website, because of safety, we, we, we don't know well, we don't keep our address public. We are often threatened, but there's a reason why we moved and we stopped and why we stopped publishing on our website the address of our offices. But somebody showed up at our offices with a letter saying he has the right to request these images removed from the website because of the right to being forgotten, and then came the DOS attacks. And let me just close by saying something very briefly. With regards to the press, the independent marginal press in Mexico, like Animal Politico can probably tell you this as well, any effort requires money, and it's usually money that we could better spend on something else. So the issue of Adrián Rubalcaba and, and Guajimalpa, including Moreira, has meant a huge effort that we could be using for something else. And I believe that those attacks will continue, not only in this uh, democracy, but also in all weakened democracies, as in our case, democracy is depending or relying heavily on independent expression. And uh, this needs to be 
addressed in different panels at different levels because as citizens, we have the right to know who's Carlos Salinas de Gortari. We cannot forget who this guy was or who's Moreira or who continues to be who, who said he continues to be or any of the corrupt uh, governors that are, um, there are plenty of them, and I wouldn't have enough uh, fingers in my hands or a hair uh, or in, in my head to count them just because that law is being abused and there's a, a deviation of it and because we're required to do. So, uh, thank you, Alejandro. We have only 10 minutes. This is a very short panel, and I, now I will go directly to ask Michelle Paulson from Wikimedia Foundation about what are the steps that Wikipedia is following when they receive these sort of uh, requests to delete content. A few days ago, the launching of a transparency report was announced, which uh, in a detailed manner states what governments are submitting these requests. Entonces, Michelle, me gustaría que le pudieras hablar al público sobre el informe de transparencia de la Fundación Wikimedia. Y que por favor nos digas qué es lo que está haciendo Wikipedia con estas solicitudes para eliminar contenidos. Gracias por invitarme. Me disculpo por no hablar en español. Entonces, el año pasado, como lo supieron algunos de ustedes que estuvieron en el, el Wikipedia, Wikimedia anterior en, en Londres, eh, hubo un fuerte debate sobre el derecho a ser olvidado que fue parte de, el, de lo emitido por la Corte Suprema de la Unión Europea y la fundación, la fundación cree que los editores de Wikimedia tienen el derecho de incluir contenidos incluidos, los controvertidos, y que estos deben estar dentro de la... y estos deben ser eh, manejados bajo los criterios de Wikimedia y deben sentirse confiados de que el conocimiento que estén recibiendo de Wikipedia y otros proyectos de Wikimedia es eh, completo, es veraz y también eh, carece de censura. Las, de, de, las solicitudes de borrar contenido pueden ser una amenaza directa hacia nuestra misión de traer con, con, conocimiento libre en todas partes y el, eh, el fallo de la Corte Europea de hecho daña la libertad de expresión. La libertad de expresión Ahora muchos, mucho contenido en Wikipedia está siendo borrado sin que nosotros lo aprobemos, sin transparencia y tampoco sin ningún proceso de apelación o de revisión judicial. La Corte Europea ha, ha mantenido su compromiso para mantener la información libre como uno de los derechos de una sociedad democrática, el derecho para defender la, de, la libertad de expresión en Europa es, se encuentra bajo la prerrogativa de empresas privadas quienes están decidiendo qué es lo que debe o no debe aparecer en los vínculos actualmente y el impacto sobre Wikipedia es muy grande, el derecho a ser olvidado puede utilizarse para poder bloquear a los usuarios de Internet para que accesan, accedan a artículos relevantes en Internet, incluyendo artículos de Wikipedia también se puede utilizar para ocultar información fuentes relevantes y veraces que diferentes actores pueden estar utilizando como referencias para los artículos de Wikipedia. Nosotros consideramos que no podemos eh, aumentar el conocimiento de la humanidad sin tener recursos veraces basados en eh, la, una historia que no esté preeditada. Entonces, una de las maneras en las que estamos tratando de traer algo de luz sobre este tipo de solicitudes, no solo a las que tienen que ver con el derecho a ser olvidado, sino todas las de eliminar información que sale en nuestro informe de transparencia cada seis meses. Acabamos de emitir el último hace unos días. Lo pueden revisar en trans transparency.wikimedia.com, el cual delinea los tipos de solicitudes que recibimos, incluyendo las solicitudes generales para alterar o eliminar contenidos, eh, solicitudes del derecho al olvido y también incluye un desglose país por país, así como una, un desglose de las que provienen de instituciones gubernamentales y no gubernamentales. Y todas estas solicitudes 
han sido publicadas en los últimos seis meses hemos recibido aproximadamente 234 solicitudes para alterar o borrar conocimiento, hemos denegado absolutamente todas ellas, creemos el contenido de Wikipedia debe, creo que en Wikipedia son los usuarios los que deben considerar que es adecuado y que no lo es, pueden leer más en nuestro informe de transparencia, específicamente en relación con las solicitudes del derecho al olvido hay dos maneras distintas en las que se puede saber cómo esto tiene un efecto en Wikipedia hay algunas solicitudes que hemos recibido que han venido directamente a nosotros y que han invocado el derecho al olvido, todas las cuales hemos negado. Estas van desde enero a junio de este año y la razón por la que recibimos tan pocas es que la mayor parte de ellas van directamente a los motores de búsqueda en lugar de a Wikipedia. Entonces tratan de... Eh, tratan de saltarnos y van directamente a Google, Yahoo y Bing y cuando sea que recibimos notificaciones de que un artículo de Wikipedia uh, se, se ha retirado el vínculo a un artículo de Wikipedia, las, uh, los motores de búsqueda no, es, no deben informarnos, no están obligados a informarnos. Google lo hace y nosotros ponemos estos, eh, estos anuncios en wikimediafoundation.org diagonal eh, Wiki, wiki diagonal eh, solicitudes y si van ahí verán que recibimos 25 notificaciones que han infectado diversos artículos de Wikipedia incluyendo algunos en fines eh, holandés, italiano, inglés eh, en español también así como en Wikimedia Commons también hay un puñado de solicitudes que afectan a otros wikis que no son wikis de contenido, pero esto es lo que sucede cuando se saltan a Wikipedia y los procesos comunitarios para poder censurar contenidos y seguimos estando vigilantes y defendiendo el contenido donde sea que podamos en todo el mundo. Oh, thank you very much. I will uh, summarize a couple of points me Michelle made before I give the floor to Luis Fernando. One of the important aspects is that Wikimedia Foundation is issuing this uh, transparency report every six months so that uh, we can know what governments are issuing this sort of requests. And also second, in connection with what Alejandro Dulce said, oftentimes this type of uh, prior censorship bypasses the, the medium that is being uh, censored. It is not that, uh, that the sin embargo, no political Wikipedia receive uh, a request. Uh, It is a request going directly um, made to Google, invoking the right of be forgotten in order to delink the content. So as uh, Michelle very well said, they are not bound to notify the medium. However, Google does this no notification, and then it is possible to react somehow. Now, regarding this and um, considering the scope that this, uh, that this uh, poor form of right away forgotten disguised as uh, the right to protect personal data. Well, now our next speaker will uh, discuss this. I'll be very, very brief. I will say a lot in, uh, in, in very little time. Hopefully, I will be understood. But first of all, I would like to clarify certain aspects. First of all, this uh, so-called right to be forgotten, and I hope I will never repeat this uh, phrase again during my presentation, supposedly uh, arose from a decision of the Supreme Court of Justice of Europe. If you review the case, in, in um, review this case, there is no such thing as a right to be forgotten. It does not exist. The only times in this sentence where you will find right to be forgotten will be when alluding to the arguments of the plaintiff. It is actually about abusing or actually is using or actually abusing the right to rectify and uh, delete personal data. First of all, we have to clarify that from the standpoint of uh, Mexican law, we, should, we are not bound to adopt that resolution by the European court, first, because we're not in Europe, and second, because from our standpoint, from our perspective, it is not compatible with the Mexican legal framework, and we do not agree with this decision from our perspective. One, uh, partly because uh, this case Uh, is about a search engine, and in that case, we do not accept that indexing or simply linking to a, to content means using personal data. Uh, there's a link, and that link will take you to an article mentioning somebody's name, and linking to that article does not imply that we are uh, dealing with personal data, and that is our opinion and was the opinion of, uh, of General Attorney Jess King before the um, decision of the European Court. We agree a lot more with the opinion of uh, 
Attorney General Justin, and we do, do, we do not have to comply with that uh, norm because uh, we're not in Europe and the Mexican legal framework is very different, and that is very important. There is a lot of, but there is an important lack of knowledge and confusion even in the media with small uh, local media that have no legal department or or anything like that. The perception there or the belief there is that it is necessary to comply with these sort of requests to eliminate content. In Mexico, there is also the provision of a previous uh, prior censorship that has been interpreted by Supreme Court in the sense that any measures that restrict freedom of expression should uh, solely be uh, um, a measure taken afterwards, not a, a measure taken beforehand. So any measures that exclude certain information from public knowledge uh, is not uh, appropriate. The, the Mexican constitutional standard on freedom of expression is that uh, in all cases, an expression might motivate you going against the messenger, but not the message. That is the constitutional decision made that is often for, uh, forgotten or neglected. So the media need to be very clear on the fact that any person or even any institution or authority is saying that they should remove any piece of content is, uh, is, is breaching that uh, right. And, uh, they might be responsible to their audiences to fight or to challenge that sort of requests. In Mexico, there is a case in which the Institute for Information Access has been tried, trying to uh, implement, uh, invoking this uh, decision, the Costeja decision, in a case that is currently being litigated. A person that is connected to, um, to an article regarding um, corruption wanted to have that link removed from um, Google. Unfortunately, the Institute for Information Access uh, actually ruled in favor of this person, Carlos Sanchez de la Peña. If you would like to search him, uh, do a search in Google, because Google is still contesting that request to edit information. We're also doing that with uh, the Fortuna magazine, which published an article alluding to this person that has been uh, connected to a case of uh, corruption that is also connected with a former president of Mexico. Uh, Mr. Fox, and it is uh, pending litigation. And uh, I would like to go beyond that. And now that I've tried to to discuss a bit of the legal framework in which the media develops in Mexico, it is important to consider some practices. For instance, those that I've mentioned about Wikimedia, uh, for example, the, the need of transparency about what is uh, removed and why is it removed, and to have guidelines in place. A few days ago, uh, the BBC um, published uh, guidelines uh, explaining what are the standards they use uh, when dealing with this sort of requests to uh, modify or eliminate content. And they're actually publishing a list of uh, links that are being removed from Google, BBC links, based on this uh, decision, the Costeja case. And in our organization, we are very um, enthusiastic about cooperating with local uh, media, with digital media, in the understanding that given the situation of freedom of expression in our country, there are few means so that public interest information that is critical for the status quo can be uh, disseminated. And it is important understanding what you said, for instance, Alejandro, that these are small, uh, these are small media and how difficult it is for uh, for you. We are we are willing to coordinate uh, dialogue amongst um, journalists uh, to prepare common guidelines on how to address these sort of requests and also provide legal advice and even um, legal defense, as has been the case with the Fortuna magazine. Also, it is important to publish, as the BBC is doing, uh, publishing the content that is uh, sought to be eliminated. 
uh, this breaks the business model of this company called Eliminelia. They are very brazen about what they do, and this was published in an article, and this is my final comment, I swear. And he said, Mexico is an important area of opportunity because there is a lot of corruption, and a lot of people want to erase their corrupt past, and that is why we are very excited, and we want to have a lot of clients. They had 70 clients in January. Eliminelia now says they have more than 300, and that is the uh, quiet threat of censorship. We do not know what is being taken down, uh, and there is no accountability. Many local newspapers are eliminating this information because they do not know that they shouldn't be doing it. They, uh, this is very important for us to collectively resist this threat to our freedom of expression and, and the spirit that Wikipedia and Wikimedia has um, pursued all this time, this spirit of collaboration, I think this would be a great starting point so that we can discuss this with the media and the civil society organizations in order to build a collective and collaborative project to resist this sort of attempts to make this more transparent and to nourish public discussion that should exist in uh, Mexico and Latin America and not just copying decisions just because they come from Europe, but for us to have a clear context. Thank you very much, Luis Fernando. Unfortunately, we have run out of time for our panel. We won't be able to, um, to have a Q&A session. Um, however, we can answer all your questions out of this room so that we do not interrupt the following session. Thank you very much, and please give a round of applause to our speakers.